It is the dead of night. You are in your office. You worked eight meaningless hours and you have just about five minutes left before you can finally clock out of your job. You sit there, staring out the window of your company building. You contemplate something that was rather very important to you long ago as a little kid. What is it, you may ask? Nostalgia is the point I'm trying to get across here. Nostalgia sucks for me personally. One day you are super productive and next thing you know you become sad in a state of melancholy because all you're thinking about right now is why it took you 25 times to finally beat Cynthia. We hear the word nostalgia being thrown around all the time and have somewhat of a basic understanding of it but nostalgia is the sentimental longing or an affection for the past. Pokemon games, old YouTube videos, Modern Warfare 2 lobbies are all examples of times we would occasionally reminisce to relive again. This very very same definition can be applied to the Nihongo anime, but I'll get back to this shortly. Recently, nostalgia has been hitting me harder than trying to get out of my bed to pee at 4 in the morning, and it's for something you guys would have probably never guessed. One, two, three, and four. Have you ever turned to the cold side of your pillow on a hot day? That's what it felt like listening to Vaporwave. Artists took old Japanese songs from the 1980s and put life to them. They upped the tempo, slapped a funky beat, and made the lyrics faster. It's like giving life to your grandfather by turning him into the Terminator. If you were listening to Vaporwave back in the day, you stayed for the experience and left with a new state of mind. This guy was sick. He sang on top of a cheeseburger. Aesthetics was probably the reason why I always felt a huge wave of nostalgia during and after my vaporwave phase. The ability to take old commercials or the aesthetic style of old 80s anime and use it in a way to reflect the mood of the music is, I don't know, pretty epic. As vaporwave was getting bigger, it birthed another subgenre of fans that decided to say, hey, what if instead of listening to vaporwave music, what if we listen to the original source? Yeah, sure. And thus, City Pop was born. Miki Matsubara, Tatsuro Yamashita, Toshiki Karamatsu, all these big 1980s Japanese singers who had their fair share of fame at one point, out of nowhere, boom, holy cannoli, look at that viewership spike. The woman who sang the number one City Pop song, Plastic Love, couldn't believe the spike in viewership herself. We sort of witnessed a revival in 80s Japanese music, and thanks to Vaporwave and the internet, what was once music that was closed off to the world 40 years ago, you can listen to this stuff for free today, at the comfort of your your own home. And then it dawned on me. Isn't this already like happening to anime? There seems to be an abundance of modern anime out there that was influenced by anime that found success during the 1980s. Studio Ghibli is coming out of retirement for the 13th time. Megalobox was created to honor this guy. Zero Two's Hotter Sister is getting a completely redone fresh anime adaptation. Reasons like this has brought me to the firm conclusion that the 1980s was the best anime decade. Not because the content created within the decade was great, but it sort of kickstarted modern anime as a whole. As a result, modern anime of the 21st century has kept the anime of old still relevant today. The torch has been passed on as some people may think, much like how Vaporwave revived old Japanese music and brought the rise of city pop. To back up this huge claim and to hopefully make you understand where I'm coming from, let's start off with a little history. You're living in Japan in 1979. The world around you is vibrant and quiet. The country is not in any wars and the government isn't in shambles. Overall, you think life is pretty good. But what if on one fateful day, Japan said, Hey, happy new year's guys, it's officially 1980. Well, uh, I think it's time to uh, increase industrial production of all technologies by 400%. Wait, what? Japan? Save some for the rest of us! The emergence of big Japanese car companies, revolutionary video games, cell phones, Yakuza. The country of Japan in less than 10 years has become an economic powerhouse. They were swimming in money. If you were living in Japan during this time, chances are you had more than $2 in your bank account. This sort of economic boom allowed Japan to experiment with anime. Before this, anime was always a thing during this time, but was viewed as cheap entertainment that was never seen as something worthwhile to grow. And thus, proper attention was never given. But now that the Japanese were stupid, filthy, rich, they talked amongst themselves. What if we used our laundered, uh, oh, I, I mean, well-earned money to properly improve the anime industry? And they did just that, and holy balls did it pay off. If you compared anime from the 70s to anime done in the 80s, there was no competition. In the 1980s alone, over 11 anime studios were founded. Here are some of the major ones. Japan's success economically in the 1980s in 
increased the production quality of anime as a whole. By this time, anime has became a serious field of study in Japan. Anime became modern. Anime from the 2010s and over is awesome, don't get me wrong, but 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 hear me out. Historical importance, right? We couldn't have gotten here without anime at one point being here. You may say that the decade of 2010 was peak anime, but 1980 at one point was peak anime as well. If you were told to binge three seasons of Sailor Moon right now, like a, <laughs> a certain someone I know, you wouldn't get much out of it today compared to if you watched it when it aired in 1989. The show can be real competitive, the story progression at times can be incredibly slow, and yet, three decades later, Sailor Moon is still literally anywhere and everywhere you go. It's that mix of nostalgia. It reminds us of a time when the world was good, a time that we wish we could relive in, or a time we desperately wanted to live in. When the trend today is to make 80s anime trendy again, it shows how much of an impact 80s anime was altogether. Respect your elders because who knows where we would be without it. The Japanese economic boom that happened in the 1980s started the anime boom at the same time, and today the anime community is doing all they can to honor the accomplishments that happened during this time. And uh, well, that's pretty cool.